Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, the incredible work you're doing. And I'm uh, pleased to be able to join to uh, encourage uh, the initiative. Let me just share a few uh, comments about what I think is uh, critical uh, for uh, a reform movement, a progressive movement. Uh, first, we have a healthcare crisis. I mean, millions of people are losing their jobs. And it's unconscionable that you would lose your job and that that would cost you your health care. There should be no tie between a person's employment and their access to health care. Health care needs to be a universal right. And that is why this is the time we need to push for the expansion of Medicare. Everyone should have Medicare. That's the idea of Medicare for all. It is very simple. Uh, currently, anyone over 65 gets Medicare. What we're saying is everyone in this country should get Medicare. You shouldn't uh, find yourself out of a job and out of getting coverage uh, for basic care, especially in the midst of a pandemic. The second thing that is so critical for us to be fighting for is uh, a cut to our bloated military budget. I mean, the uh, Trump budget, uh, which is going to be voted on in Congress uh, next week, is uh, uh, $140 billion more than where Obama left it. Uh, I have supported with Bernie Sanders a 10% cut. And to channel that money instead into public health investments, into PPE, into uh, producing masks, into uh, funding for uh, uh, treatment and testing, and uh, in clean technology. Those are the areas that are going to create jobs and make us more secure. And so we need to continue to push uh, for more strategic spending that's actually going to be in our safety and not uh, more funding for the Pentagon uh, to get into foreign wars. One of the things I've been working with. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, with uh, Bill Perry on is to stop this massive funding for the modernization of ICBMs. ICBMs are the greatest threat for nuclear war that this planet faces. The reason is if you have a nuclear weapon uh, launched on a submarine uh, or launched on a aircraft uh, uh, aerial bomber, uh, you can at least recall it. You have some time to recall it. Once you have an ICBM launch, there is no chance to recall it. And all of the experts have said, don't modernize the ICBMs. It's not necessary uh, for our national security. It's, it's a waste of resources. And so I have an amendment that would stop the modernization for those ICBMs and put that money instead into clean technology, uh, into uh, public health. Uh, we also uh, must fight for the uh, wages and decent conditions for workers. Uh, I have pushed forward with Senator Warren a workers' bill of rights, which says that workers deserve hazard pay, collective bargaining rights. They should be treated as employees, not as independent contractors. Uh, they need to have childcare in this pandemic. Uh, a lot of them are uh, exposed without uh, adequate childcare, without adequate health care. Uh, in fact, and it's uh, affecting uh, Black and Latinx women. I mean, uh, only one out of five Black or Latinx women are able to work remotely. 80% uh, are having to work physically in essential jobs, and they aren't being uh, protected. They don't have enough PPE. They are going to employers who aren't socially distancing. They don't have childcare. Uh, this is unconscionable. Uh, we need to have protection for our workers, and that needs to be part of this final stimulus. Uh, we are working hard to make sure we have a stimulus. As people on this call may know, I proposed a $2,000 a month payment when this crisis started. And I'm still pushing for that. I mean, we need $2,000 a month so people don't default on rent, so they don't default on mortgage. We have a potential eviction crisis coming. I don't get how we can give billions of dollars to the banks, billions of dollars to corporations, but we can't give uh, money to working class families, middle class families. Uh, we have the money in a low interest rate environment. Even the Fed chair is begging us to support middle class and working class families. We need to give that funding uh, now and, and get that stimulus as part of uh, this, uh, the stimulus payments as part of our next uh, package. And we need to extend unemployment. I mean, this idea that the White House has that uh, somehow unemployment extensions are going to be a disincentive to create a job. I don't know what world they're living in. Where are these jobs? I mean, people are afraid to go out. The, the businesses are afraid to open. Uh, there is no job to be had. It's four, five job seekers for every job opening. Uh, so the idea that uh, uh, by giving people uh, $600 a week that you're somehow disincentivizing their job creation is just not borne out not only by anecdote, but by the data. In fact, what you're doing by giving people that income is you're allowing them to spend, and that's what's creating jobs, that if they can spend at 
uh, on uh, a restaurant, if they can spend it on groceries, if they can spend it on their daily essentials, that's at least boosting consumer spending, boosting the economy and preventing us from going into a depression. So we need to have that extended. We need to have aid to cities and states so that we don't have further cuts in education. And Tammy Baldwin and I have said we need massive funding for our schools to be able to deal with remote learning and to be able to provide technology to students and also training to teachers to be able to do remote learning, which is going to be part of the fall. Even if some schools open some days of the week, uh, they're going to need remote learning. They're going to need more uh, PPE for teachers and staff to the one extent that they do open, and that requires uh, funding. Let, let me uh, address two, two final points. Uh, one is the importance of this election. Regardless of uh, your ideology and people on this call know I chaired, uh, co-chaired with Nina Turner, the great Nina Turner, and Ben Cohen, and uh, Carmen Cruz, uh, the Bernie Sanders' campaign. But this is about, this is bigger than Bernie Sanders. This is bigger than progressive Democrats. I mean, Donald Trump is ordering secret police uh, to go into Portland unnamed in secret vans uh, detaining protesters. I never thought I would see that in the United States of America. He is making comments that we don't want people going into the suburbs uh, who may be uh, of a different race. I mean, it's explicit appeals to uh, racial fear to division. Uh, we need to defeat Trump and Trumpism. We need to uh, start anew in this country and defeat that ideology that is divisive, that is compromising our civil liberties, that is compromising peaceful protests. Uh, and I uh, believe we have to have massive mobilization. We The polls don't matter at this point. I mean, uh, yeah, it's better to be up than down, but this race is going to come down to mobilization. And I'm concerned in a uh, election that's going to be co uh, conducted with the fear of coronavirus, whether uh, our side will turn out and, and how we get our voters to the polls and how we get our voters uh, to safely hand in absentee ballots and protect those ballots. Uh, let me end with my reflections on uh, an extraordinary American, and that is uh, John Lewis. Uh, uh, John Lewis is, is a true American hero. There are not many heroes in our time. John Lewis is, is a hero, was a hero. Uh, he was a mentor to so many of us in Congress. Uh, he was considered the conscience of Congress, just an incredibly decent person. Uh, anytime students would want to talk to him, he would take the time, stop, uh, ask them about their passion, what they wanted to do. Uh, he believed in this country so deeply. He believed in uh, the civil rights movement and voting rights. He paved the way for my parents to come to this country. If they weren't uh, civil rights, if it weren't for the civil rights movement, we wouldn't have had the Immigration Reform Act of 65 that opened the door for so many Indian Americans, Chinese Americans to come to America, including my parents. So we're all in John Lewis's debt and uh, we need to reflect particularly at this moment with the tensions along race and the awakening about racial injustice in law enforcement, racial injustice in so many aspects in healthcare, in education, in the job market. Uh, we need to reflect about how we can continue to fill uh, John Lewis's legacy, to build his legacy for a more just and equitable society and to rededicate ourselves to that work. Uh, so I appreciate all that you're doing uh, today uh, in helping build a progressive future for a country. I feel uh, just like I did when I was on Bernie Sanders' campaign that this country is desperate, hungry for the, a new progressive movement. And it's for all of us to bring that movement about through our grassroots organizing. Thank you for, for what you're doing.